Hello friends and welcome back, Lisa here. Before I start in on today's topic, I just wanna take a moment and say that there is so much going on in the news right now that it is more important than ever to take time for true self-care. So if you need to turn off the internet, do some deep breathing, spend some time in nature, connect with female friends. To an extent, the chaos of the world is by design and it is meant to rob you of your well-being and your power, so please don't let it. Make taking care of yourself a top priority. Uh, with that said, today I wanna talk about our Christian Supreme Court. I wanna call it what it is. It's not a conservative court. In fact, it's quite radical. It is a Christian radical court. Obviously, the big news was the overturning of Roe v. Wade in the Dobbs v. Jackson case, and that case certainly has a major Christian overtone to it. Um, side note, I'm using Christian as a catch-all term that includes Catholic. The Dobbs case was about controlling and terrorizing women, but it was also about imposing Christian morals onto other people, which, let's be real, might be the same thing. That decision didn't just impose Christian dogma onto non-religious people, but even onto other religions. I saw a great short video by Marian Haberman about what Judaism teaches regarding abortion and the value of a fetus versus the mother's life and when a fetus is considered a person. I will link that video below if you're interested in learning more about that. But basically her main point is that the Christian view is at odds with the Jewish view on abortion, and this ruling will prevent some people from practicing their religious beliefs the way that they want to. In this country, we have the Bill of Rights, ratified way back in 1791 as the first 10 amendments to our Constitution. And the first words, some would say the most important, are, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's the separation of church and state that you hear so much about. It's really at the core of our freedoms in this country that the government shouldn't tell you what to believe or how to practice or not practice your religion. And now with respect to abortion, the court has enabled the states to push this very Christian dogma onto people. But with this big decision, there were another two cases that kind of flew under the radar and I wanna catch you up on those as well in case you missed them. Like the Dobbs case, these were six to three decisions with Team Christ in favor and the liberal justices opposing. The first case is Carson v. Macon a case which originated in Maine. This case was over rural communities that don't have public schools and instead provide tuition for kids to attend private schools. So taxpayer money was going to pay for private schools and the state wasn't allowing those funds to be used for explicitly Christian education. They only allowed for schools that had a curriculum similar to what you'd get in a public school. And the Supreme Court ruled that Christian schools had to be included. That is, that taxpayer money should go to fund Christian education. And if you think that doesn't sound too radical, let me read you the mission statement from Temple Academy, which is one of the schools at issue in the case. Temple Academy exists to know the Lord Jesus Christ and make him known through accredited academic excellence and programs presented through our thoroughly Christian biblical worldview. For the spiritual and moral growth of students, to provide every student with the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior, to foster within each student an attitude of love and reverence for the Bible as the infallible, inerrant, and authoritative word of God. And it goes on. That is the kind of education the Supreme Court ruled must be funded with taxpayer money if a community funds private education in lieu of public schools. 
In the dissenting opinion, Justice Breyer wrote that the main goal of a public school is to offer a civic education and that the court had previously consistently required public education to be free from religious indoctrination. And he also wrote that taxpayers may be upset at having to finance the propagation of religious beliefs that they do not share and with which they disagree. The second case that came through was Kennedy v. Bremerton School District. In this case, a public high school football coach was told to stop praying with students after games. Again, in a 6-3 decision, the court ruled that he was perfectly within his rights to pray with students in this public school setting, which goes counter to decades and decades of Supreme Court decisions removing prayer from the public school environment. Prayer has been blocked from assemblies, sports events, graduations, etc. It is not allowed in that environment. And the reason is because in those settings, people, including children, will be coerced to go along with prayers they don't believe in. And that infringes on their right to practice religion or not practice it in any manner that they choose. Kids absolutely feel pressured in that situation to fit in with their peers and to impress their adult role models and there are material rewards or punishments on the line as well. Justice Sotomayor wrote about that in her dissent. She wrote, Students look up to their teachers and coaches as role models and seek their approval. Students also depend on this approval for tangible benefits. Players recognize that gaining the coach's approval may pay dividends, small and large, from extra playing time to a stronger letter of recommendation to additional support in college athletic recruiting. Justice Gorsuch, in the majority opinion, wrote that the coach only prayed brief, silent, solitary prayers while players were occupied, texting, or talking to friends. He wrote, The prayers for which Mr. Kennedy was disciplined were not publicly broadcast or recited to a captive audience. Students were not required or expected to participate. Does this look like brief, silent, solitary prayer in which students weren't expected to participate? These are photos of this specific coach praying with his team. It's not very Christian of you to lie, Justice Gorsuch. This decision prioritized the right of the Christian coach to pray over the rights of the children to not be coerced into prayer. The decision also discussed free speech in the workplace. And there are a lot of prohibitions on public employee speech. And this should be just another one of those. This isn't about policing of a silent, solitary thought or something like that. This is about preventing someone from coercing others into their religion and proselytizing whilst on the job as a public employee. And I think that ties this case back to the Dobbs case. There is a lack of respect for others' freedom and autonomy in practicing or not practicing religion and in controlling their bodies and minds. It's an imposition. It's about control and coercion. In those two cases, we really should be asserting that individuals deserve respect and deserve the right to choose what happens to them bodily or spiritually. I also want to note that both Carson v. Macon and Kennedy v. Bremerton are about schools. And the people these decisions ultimately impact are impressionable children, the next generation. And this really seems like the intent is to enable the indoctrination of children into Christianity. In the dissent in Carson, Justice Sotomayor wrote rather ominously, with growing concern for where this court will lead us next, I respectfully dissent. And when it comes to pushing Christianity on the American people, what will the court decide on next? Is contraception on the chopping block? Is gay marriage? Is homosexuality? It's pretty concerning that the court is prioritizing dogma over our basic rights and freedoms. And it shows a complete steamrolling over the will of the people. They are pushing the agenda of a minority onto unwilling recipients in a way that goes counter to the Constitution. These six jurists, three of whom were installed by Trump, a president who lost the popular vote and was impeached twice, wield so much power and it's disturbing the way in which they are using it. The dystopia is now, 
And these decisions show the dangerous direction in which we are heading. So again, take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Bye.